Here we're gonna look at an important result involving continuous functions and compact sets and uniform continuity. Before we dive into what we will prove, let's recall the definition of uniform continuity. A function f from a to r is said to be uniformly continuous on a, where a is a subset of real numbers. If for every epsilon bigger than zero, there is a delta bigger than zero, such that for all x, y, and a that are within delta of each other, their outputs f of x minus f of y, th those are within epsilon of each other. And the important thing to notice here is that if we are given some epsilon, then the delta works for the entire set. And so that makes this notion of uniform continuity a set-wise definition. You talk about uniform continuity on a set versus regular continuity, which is generally thought of as a point-wise definition. You talk about continuity at a point. Okay, so we're gonna prove the following, like I said, classic theorem that says that if K is a compact set of real numbers, and f is a function from k to r, and it's continuous at every point in k, then it turns out that it's uniformly continuous on k. And the best way to prove this is via a result which gives us an equivalent definition to uniform continuity. So let's maybe get that result up here. So that's better. This is the classification that we're gonna to wanna to use for uniform continuity. And in fact, it's a theorem that we proved in a previous video of how to show something is not uniformly continuous, which may seem like the opposite thing of what we need, but we'll prove this by contradiction so it's exactly what we need. So it says that f from a to r is not uniformly continuous on a, if and only if there exists epsilon not bigger than zero and two sequences x n y n that are in a such that the difference of the terms of these sequences approach zero but the difference of the terms of the sequences after being plugged into the function is always bigger than or equal to some epsilon naught in other words it does not approach zero so let's go ahead and see how we can use that to prove this theorem. So what we wanna do is suppose K is compact, F from K to R is continuous on all of K. So maybe we'll write it like this, continuous, but not uniformly continuous on K. So like I said, we're working here towards a contradiction. So maybe we'll put up here by way of contradiction. Great. So now we wanna use this assumption that it's not uniformly continuous to grab a value of epsilon naught here and two sequences satisfying this. So let's find an epsilon naught which is bigger than zero and two sequences, xn and yn, which are themselves subsets of k, which is a compact set, such that um, xn minus yn, so the difference of these two sequences is approaching zero, but f evaluated at xn minus f evaluated at yn is always bigger than this epsilon naught. But now what we wanna do is use the fact that we've got sequences of real numbers up on a compact set. But compact sets are closed and bounded in the real numbers, so we've got bounded sequences of numbers. And so since we have bounded sequences of numbers, they always have convergent subsequences. So let's find a convergent subsequence. Maybe we'll call it x n sub k um, of x sub n. And maybe let's go ahead and point out that this is possible because k is compact. So it's important to notice that that's where we use the compactness of k. Great, and so let's go ahead and say that this convergent subsequence converges to something. So we'll say that the limit as k approaches infinity of x sub n sub k is equal to x. Now what we wanna do is notice that we can use 
some algebraic properties of limits that we proved earlier to also calculate um, the limit of y sub n sub k, where that's like using the same sequence of natural numbers to produce a subsequence of y sub n. So let's notice that the limit as k goes to infinity of y sub n sub k is the same thing as the limit as k goes to infinity of x sub n sub k plus y sub n sub k minus x sub n sub k. Great. But now we know that this is itself a subsequence of x sub n minus y sub n, but x sub n minus y sub n converges to zero. So since we know that that converges to zero and subsequences always converge to the same thing that the parent sequence converged to, we know that this bit converges to zero, and which tells you that this thing converges to x because there we had a sum of convergent sequences. So here we've got x sub n is converging to x and y sub n sub k is also converging to x. Okay, so we've used our sequences and we've used the compactness of k. Now we wanna use the continuity of f. So let's use the continuity of f to say that the limit as k approaches infinity of the absolute value of f of x sub n sub k minus f of y sub n sub k is equal to the absolute value of f of x minus f of x. Because we've got continuity here, which means we have sequential continuity, so we can just bring the limit inside of the function there. But that's clearly equal to zero. Great. But that means that we can find some capital K, which is a natural number, such that if little k is bigger than or equal to capital K, we have absolute value of f of x sub n sub k minus f of y sub n sub k is as small as we want. And we know we can make it as small as we want because this thing is trending towards zero. So how small do we want to make it? We will, well, we want to make it strictly less than epsilon naught. So let's see what we've got and how we have created a contradiction. So we assumed this was not uniformly continuous. That gave us this setup here where we had xn minus yn going to zero, but the absolute value of f of x sub n minus f of y sub n is bigger than or equal to epsilon naught, and this is true for all natural numbers n. But then, using the compactness of k, we grabbed some convergent subsequences, and then along with those convergent subsequences and the continuity of f, we were able to find a place where this term was actually less than epsilon naught, which you clearly cannot be simultaneously bigger than or equal to epsilon naught and less than epsilon naught. So that gives us our contradiction. So we go up here to the first assumption that we made, but the only assumption that we made is not uniformly continuous. So that means that assumption was in error, which means this thing is uniformly continuous. And that's a good place to stop.